Okay, go ahead. It's all yours. So I'm going to share my. Uh, you have to enable screen sharing now oh. first. <laughs> I do. Yes. There we go. Thank you. So um, today I tried profiling. Uh, uh, the git plugin checkout step with uh, a much larger repository. Uh, it's a uh, public repository of a framework called CDAP. It's, uh, later, it's used for data analytics. And uh, it's of the size of uh, uh, almost one GB, the size of the repository. Uh, I have, it's, so it has a lot of commits, 50,000, 1,000 branches. So, so very big repository. So, so what happened? Uh, so how was I profiling and analyzing the results? So I uh, sorted the threads from uh, from the, the time when it starts to an increasing order. And so I know the first, uh, so I, what I know is that with the fix, I would just see one fetch call and without the fix, I would see two fetch call, one uh, after some time uh, from the first one. So with the first one, uh, this is this thread dump is with the fakes, and as we progress further with time, um, these are the calls get fetch. This is just one call for git fetch, and it it almost takes what eighteen minutes for this git fetch. It's because it's it's a very large repository, right? Oh, yeah. Question. Yes, Mark. Just to be sure I understand context, so. Is the is the remote repository on your local hard drive, or is the remote repository over the network? Over the network, Mark. Okay, this thank is over you. The network profile. Great. Okay, so this is this is real world testing. You are testing a, a transferring a gigabyte from GitHub. Yes, and uh, whatever tests I provided related to profiling, they were over the network. They were not. Uh, they were not from my local Git server. Okay. So uh, without the fix, the first Git fetch call it. Uh, okay, the first git fetch call is taking uh, 16 minutes. I'm not sure why is it taking less. That might be because of the network. Uh, but the second git fetch call is just taking 10 seconds more. Okay. So when I was saying that there's a difference of two minutes, what I think I did wrong was with the fix that I did not wipe out the workspace before building the second. So I, it was a consecutive build. Uh, of the results I showed, uh, so the build was the second build. So maybe I did not wipe out the workspace, and that is why the first git fetch, uh, the time taken was considerably less from the com from the build I was comparing without the fix. So uh, I may need to test this much. I mean, need to profile this much more to exactly understand how much time difference again but it's it's going to be i think it's going to be much less lesser than maybe a minute and, it's and just probably, you know seconds even so you have saved you by by if we re remove the redundant fetch and even yes. if only save 10 seconds out of 20 minutes that's that's still a win and the the crucial thing that i've seen at some large installations is they have their local bitbucket server and they're overloading that Bitbucket server with calls because all of their agents are calling into this Bitbucket server. And okay. by cutting out, by removing one of the calls, you have cut in half the load that we're applying to that Bitbucket server. So, so yes, it may, it, may be, it may be a smaller number in terms of, of the actual impact on a specific job, but by cutting in half the number of times we make a request to that central server, we may significantly improve performance for some of these people who are who are very attached to their large repositories. Uh, I remember a, a, a previous employer where I had a 20 gigabyte repository, and every single clone was was just terribly expensive. So, so this is this is a great excuse to save some time. So, don't don't be shy. Good thing you learned. That's great. Yeah, Mark. So, so I was thinking of profiling uh, with. Some more repositories, some more large repositories to actually see how much time difference are we gaining there. So, um, uh, can we can we try on that repository which Mark was mentioning the other day? Like uh, he has some messy repository. With him. Linux, the Linux kernel. No, no, the one no. the one he's talking about is my yep. my Jenkins bugs repository. It's a smaller repository. It's only okay. fifty or 
50 or 60 megabytes, it's not the one gigabyte that your large repository okay. is, but it is, and it's probably actually fewer branches than your larger, than your one gig repository. I think it only has maybe 150 or 200 branches, but they are almost all the branches are active and almost all the branches are independent of one another. And because of that, the, it, it gives a very different shape to the, to the history of that repository than a typical repository. Okay, so maybe Mark, I could test, uh, I could profile the Jenkins on that repository. Yeah, and it's, it's up to you, you get to choose. And, and mm -hmm. I, think, I think there's, there are, you've discovered fascinating things already here that, hey, the second request to this one was much, much faster and that matches with results I had seen when I had done benchmarking some years ago from bug reports in Jenkins, where they where users said, "Hey, the second call is prohibitively expensive," and my attempts to duplicate it as prohibitively expensive all failed. I, I saw it, it had cost; it wasn't free, but I didn't see the you know the fifty percent of the initial clone spent in the second clone, or fifty percent of the initial fetch spent in the second. So, okay, and uh, uh, one more thing I, I, I probably test is uh, the number of commits, is that making a difference rather than the size only? So right now I was just looking at the size of the repository. Uh, so with, with the results I showed yesterday, the, this is the re repository, the Samba repository. So it, it has a lot of, uh, it's way more, the, the commits is almost 50% more mm -hmm. with the current repository I have. So. Maybe I'm not sure, but this is something I, 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 I'll, I'll test. And, and I, that's, a, that's an interesting piece of data to track, and you should track it, because yeah. it very well could be exactly the number of commits that's the most interesting problem. Yeah. Okay, yes, I'll, I'll definitely do that. I've, I've heard that called sensitivity analysis to decide which parameter is, is the most impactful to some change. Uh -huh. And it, it's certainly very helpful to your determining which heuristic you should use for repository size. If number of commits is the important thing, then asking for the size on disk is not nearly as relevant as, as other, other queries. Other queries, yes. Okay, I'm going to do that. So, um, so this is the, the report, I think. In a sense, the report on Chartworks is to one station. Uh, so, Mark, no, do you want to say something related to the demonstration or should I move forward? You can with... move forward. I was, I was delighted with how you handled it, pleased with, with the results you showed and the fact that the, the people in the SIG meeting had good questions to ask you about the, the results you were seeing. Good, good job. Yes. Thanks, Mark. So, one, um, question about, one question about the, the result you were showing before. Uh, when you are talking about a large repository, do you mean a, a repository with a lot of branch commits and files, or, or is a repository with large files? I don't know um, if maybe the size of the uh, files uh, might impact in the results of the analysis. So, so Fran, while uh, while I have profiled these uh, operation, the git fetch operation, the redundant one, I the only thing in my mind was the size of the files. But uh, this is a this is the realization as I was as I was showing the results. This is the realization I had just had that I should also uh, look at the the number of commits and the number of branches while I'm doing so. So, uh, so this is the next thing. Sensitivity analysis. What Mark said. I'm going to do that. Uh, the repositories, the number of commits I'm going to, and I'm probably going to take uh, multiple repositories with a lot of uh, commits and a lot of branches. So I'm going to test, uh, I'm going to profile the Jenkins for with, with those repositories. Now, now in terms of your profiling, is it, would it be lower cost to do that outside of JFR with simple timestamp instrumentation? Is that reliable enough for you? Or do you, are you finding that JFR is so helpful that you just as soon be inside JFR? I, I don't know your experience there. Has JFR been helpful for you in that regard? You've liked Java Flight Recorder? Um, personally, Mark, I, I tried uh, using system.nanotime 
to uh, mark the difference between so, but i uh, it was giving me very unreliable results when i was uh, consecutively uh, testing the builds uh, taking the results but with the with jfr the one thing i've seen is that the results are consistent for the same repository for the same experiments when i'm um, when i'm launching consecutive builds the fair, the thread the time duration for the thread for one git fetch call is is nearly the same so uh, so that is why i i have an inclination i i think i think that uh, it, it's giving me reliable results rather than uh, using system dot nano time great but, excellent good uh, choice then. i i could probably do both i could just uh, so if i put system dot nano time and i uh, log out the difference uh, so i can see that on the build log also i can use profiling so i could do both if i i, I have to check the difference if there is a difference uh, without using jfr so you, you what you're saying is that is jfr adding a production uh, an overhead to the performance is actually i was more i wasn't worried about jfr's overhead as much as i was worried about is it is it the simplest way for you to do what you're doing if it's the simplest way then that's that's that gives it value immediately because you're trying to explore and understand so whatever whatever works best for you do that yeah it it, it is okay it's it's simple it's not that difficult for me to do it great yeah. so uh the next thing so we discussed yesterday that we are uh, on wednesday that we are going to uh, interactively test uh, the fix we have uh, we've done for the git redundant fetch so for that uh, i've started doing that i I've, I've done it for some uh, so i the first the scenario i wanted to take was all the use cases uh, cases which are related to uh, somehow the structure of the repository uh, which would bring uh, a difference in the structure of repository after we choose that behavior uh, which could be related to the size ref specs commit history so uh, so i i have tested interactively uh, this fix with advanced with the advanced clone behavior i have i've chosen shallow clone with the depth and then so how do i test it i go to the workspace and i uh, i see the log i see the history uh, i see the head where is it attached for both of them and um, and of course the size of course the size of the repository so uh, with these parameters i'm i'm seeing same results for both this is how i'm basically testing for any case the second uh, test scenario i took was uh, to check out for a specific branch uh, and so i wanted to see if i'm resulting with the same branch is the is the head attached to the same branch when i check out uh, in the workspace with the fix and without the fix and it was the same so uh, so i'm going to take more cases so it's i i have no preference with the behaviors i'm i'm choosing right now but uh, these were the cases i i really wanted to test shallow clone or i i'll probably check sparse check out as well although i don't think it it, it interacts with uh, the redundancy of the git fetch but yeah, it's still actually i would drop sparse check out because it, it is entirely a workspace operation so okay. so it doesn't change the quantity of history we retrieve all it changes okay. is the checkout operation and what your focus is on is the fetch operation so you don't need to spend time on sparse checkout if if we break it we broke it for another reason okay okay man got it so uh, so this is how i'm doing it uh, so I'll, one thing i'll do is i'm going to uh, i'm going to make a document here at the test plan i'm going to share it so that you know that i i'm not wasting time on some operations i should not great so i'm going to do do that um the fetch results we've discussed so uh going to change the parameters of my profiling a little bit and then see what kind of results we have so uh for the heuristics we uh, we were discussing to calculate repository size so i uh, so the first thing we were talking about was to use uh, uh we talked so uh, before that so i was uh, i was exploring a little bit how is the repository size is affected by uh, the type of get objects we have inside the repository so i'm seeing that we have blobs trees commits uh, tags and references so right now by using git ls remote we can list the references and the tags but well, we can uh, list so yeah 
to be clear, what you can list is the tip of the branches and the, you, the, you can list the names of the remote branches yes. and the SHA-1 of that remote branch. Yes. And the tags, and I think the SHA-1 for the tag. Uh, Rob, I have, I actually, uh, I, I compared two repositories uh, with this operation, Git LS remote. And uh, so in the right side, you, uh, the Git LS remote is done for um, Git client plugin. Okay. And in the left side, it's done for uh, CDAP, the repository I just showed. It has, a, has way many, much more branches and commits. So, so I think as I scroll down, it's, it's clear that, uh, just one second, I'm going to show you the difference. So this is the CDAP, the left side is the CDAP one and you can see the list goes on and on. The point is that we'll have much more uh, references for a larger size repository. So it is safe to say that yes, if we use Git LS report, we could approximately assume that, okay, this is a large size repository or a uh, small size repository. But my concern here is with, so what I did was that I pulled up some of the uh, largest re repositories I could find on GitHub. These might not be the largest one, but some of the famous ones. And what I saw was, so for this repository, the CDAP one, so we have, uh, this is a one GB file size repository. It has uh, approximately 1000 branches. Now let's go to the next repository. This is uh, the VS code Microsoft repository. It also has almost a one GB size uh, file size, but way less branches, 50% less. Then let's go to Kubernetes. It's one GB repository, but just 41 branches. And, and with, I also tried with Ansible. It's also around, it's 900 or uh, 800, but 44 branches. Uh, Ruby, Ruby was, uh, was way, way less. I think it was around 600, 700, but 22 branches. So, so what I can, I could see here is that Git LS remote, just seeing the branches might not be the best way to estimate the size of a repository. So maybe we need to make a combination like, uh, uh, uh maybe two or three, uh, heuristics, which could calculate, estimate the size of the repository. And I was also, uh, so, uh, I, I was searching the internet to find a good way to, uh, to find the size of the repository without cloning the repository. So it turns out, uh, according to my search, it's not that simple. If, if we have a clone, it's pretty easy. I think we have, we have, uh, Git provides us a functionality. There are ways we could, uh, for sure know the size uh, of the repository, but without the clone, uh, I think one, one sure way was what, Fra uh, what Justin suggested for GitHub and GitLab. We have, they have exposed APIs. I, I've tested those so we can, uh, we can get the size, uh, from a simple request rest API. Uh, but, with that also, I think the concern is that we would have users with Bitbucket or maybe individual Git servers or Git, yeah, um, a lot more uh, services which provide uh, Git SCM. So, so that might also be not the complete solution. I'm actually, uh, uh, the more I research on this thing, it's we might not have one single way com to completely uh, figure out the size. We might need to use multiple, we might ha need to have multiple actions for multiple scenarios and then create uh, a class like that. And also, so one more thing I was, I was searching was, uh, do we before, before, could we do something like this once we've built, uh, built the repository, uh, the the repository the build the repository for the first time using git plugin do we, i think we cache uh, if we have the workspace uh, somewhere i'm not sure i am actually not very well aware of the management of git plugin between master and agent i think i think that we have our workspaces on the agents and um, so if we have the workspace so what i'm trying to say here is that for once, we will not be able to improve the performance for the first time, but for the consecutive builds, or maybe once we have some information, 
then we will be able to use the size or some information from that uh, build from that workspace and then uh, use performance uh, enhancement in that uh, way also before i come to just one last i think it's probably a stupid suggestion but can we ask the user for the size of the repository while he's configuring the git plugin uh, i think that that'll be the easiest thing to do but i'm not sure if uh, so one thing i i've experienced personally is that if i if i have a github own repository i think there's no direct way to know the size of the repository there's no uh, i don't see it on the ui uh, of my repository so i'm not sure if if that's something we'd like to place that responsibility on the user i haven't seen it in the git plugin the current behavior but it's just something i was thinking about so yeah yes so i i think what you described is exactly the nature of heuristics right fallible rules are in fact the word fallible is so strongly emphasized in that phrase of a fallible rule Right, we're, we're trying to find something that we know is imperfect and we, we know it cannot be perfect because the information we need is not, not available always to us locally. So I, I think you're on the right track. Keep, keep working on those topics. And okay. yes, LS Remote is, and, and I'm, I'm glad that you found and confirmed, LS Remote is probably the weakest of the heuristics we could choose, right? Yes, it, it is because you could have a, a one a two gigabyte repository with one branch and the heuristic completely mispredicts the size of that repository because a single branch repository is legal and it's perfectly reasonable and it could be enormous now now the the i like the idea of asking the provider for the number of commits or for what whatever the provider gives as size hints right it seems like number of commits is probably one of the size hints branches is another size hint um on github this notion of releases which is really number of tags is probably another size hint and and each of those things could be could be part of that um now how do you get people to contribute to use those from the various providers, or do you put them inside the Git plugin? That's, that's I think, part of the exploration there. Okay, okay. Maybe if I provide an additional behavior like I was talking before, so if someone is choosing to improve the performance of Git plugin, then they can fill in all of those details. But then uh, I think the biggest, uh, the biggest disadvantage is there that the adoption of this uh, whole feature would be very slow if you're providing an option like that yeah. well or it, and it doesn't stop stop you as part of this project from contributing um pull requests to the github plugin and to the bitbucket plugin or to the github branch source whichever layer it is that makes sense you are welcome to go into any plugin necessary to to do the to do the to hit the goal but but it does it does add an extra layer of complexity as soon as you start doing more and more plugins if you if you're now modifying giddy github bitbucket and gitlab plugins those are four additional plugins that you've got to think about and investigate and understand okay okay but i um, if you talk about the uh, apis github and gitlab expose do um, do we do they uh, the GitLab and the GitHub plugin Jenkins plugin? Do they calculate? Do they have that information, or is that something I would have to explore? I I don't know. I would be surprised if they gathered that. But the I know that the GitHub plugin does have an API that it uses, and that that API is quite rich and capable. I don't know that the size information is already in the API. But I, okay. I, I know some people we could ask about details of that API if that would help. Liam Newman is is one that I'm sure if we just mention him on the Git plugin Gitter chat, he's happy to come answer questions. Okay, so although I have tried uh, the Git API, uh, GitHub API, which provides the size, but yes, we could probably ask how GitHub is doing. We could ask DM. How oh, so happens. so you've actually found an API in GitHub. Yes. 
and so Git, Git, GitLab. Excellent. So if, if you've got that, then whether or not it supports it, you know how to do it. And the GitHub API plugin, for instance, would just need to be extended to, to give that a, you access to that API. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I need much more exploration on these topics. And um, I think this is how much I could Let's see the agenda. Did I write something else? Yes. So, so I think the, there's a need to, I think the first thing, uh, the need is to understand how much contribution uh, to the fetch call, uh, the, the size, the number of commits, the number of branches is contributing to this, to the duration of the fetch call. This is the first thing I'm going to do. Um, Secondly, I'm going to explore the heuristics more, how we could possibly do this. And uh, well, and could it, you yeah. can, as yes, can you do the can you do the the exploration of the sensitivity piece as part of your testing activity that you were doing? Because could, could you get double duty just by while you're doing these tests, interactively checking redundant fetch behaviors? watch the numbers to see, hey, what did this, what impact did it have that I chose this repository rather than that repository? Actually, yes, Mark, that, that'll be better, yes. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, while I'm uh, testing my scenarios, I'm going to test it with dis different repositories. I, uh, Great. Number of comments on the matches, yes. Okay. Did you have uh, tags on the list also? Because uh, those would also be refs that could potentially commit, contribute to to fetch performance. Uh, I had commits and branches, but yes, Justin, I'm going to add tags in the list as well. Cool. Okay. So, uh, Mark, uh, do you would you want to talk about uh, release the release plan? Would you wanted to discuss that? Sure. If I and I'm just borrowing this meeting because we got Fran here. Uh, Justin, you're welcome to, to chime in and Omkar as well, but Fran and I are co-maintainers of the plugin. So Fran, my proposal is to release Git plugin 4.3.0 and Git client plugin 3.3.0 today with the contents of the current master branches. Um, that won't give us the symbols capability that Carl Schultz has been working on because I found a compatibility problem there. It surprised me and I just don't want to risk it. There are other things in those releases that will help users. I'm running a bunch of tests right now to be sure that I believe that code is in good shape. Are you okay with that or do you have concerns? Yes, yes, uh, ship it. I, okay. I read your, uh, your answer to Jesse's ping, um, totally fine for me. Great, all right. So, so Rishab, for your project, what this will mean is that, that the, the distance from the 4.3.0 release to your changes will be much less than if we had had you working on something based on 4.2.2. So you've been working on the master branch, therefore it shouldn't change your experience dramatically, but it was, it was one where I wanna be sure that when we bring your changes into a release, that that is the dominant portion of that release rather than all the other noise that's in this release for 4.3.0. Okay, Mark. Okay, that sounds great. All right, that's all that I had then. Okay, so uh, I guess this is it then. I'm going to work on the uh, I'm going to work on the testing heuristics, and uh, yes, I think that's it. All right, thanks everybody. A recording of the meeting will be posted uh, separately and be made list. The URL will be put into the Gitter channel. Thank you, Mark. Thank Talk you, to you Wednesday, Rishab. Thanks very much.